a question that is on a lot of people's minds, whether you're a real estate agent or a home seller. If I sell my home now, where am I going to go? We'll find out today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now, and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 160, and you can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jen O'Brien, this is going to be a great topic today because I know so many people that are like out of a house. So this is going to be good. Yeah, the reality of this crazy market, and honestly, you know, had several coach clients sessions this week and just knowing for what's happening here in Florida and Nevada and everybody I talk to I've just all the years I've been in real estate I've never really seen this low of an inventory that has created all of this so I want to chat about it today and want to help whether you happen to be listening and you're a home owner hopefully you understand some of the concepts here that that we share with real estate agents on what to talk to homeowners about if you're a home if you're a real estate agent this is really designed to help you be that trusted advisor and making sure you're staying on top of all the various options a seller has and how to present that to a seller. So I really want to cover a couple things today. I want to discuss why are we in this market? Like what's driving this crazy train? Because it's really a crazy train. You know, why are sellers hesitant to sell? We can talk a little bit about it. Right. And then really, let's go make sure you're aware of, you know, benefits obviously right now for a seller to sell. But that's the, the the opening question, of course, is why most people are not selling is they're they're worried about you know not finding something that they can purchase, right? So I just want to present information. And there's a few links in our show notes today to help you get up to speed with what's the latest and greatest on things like tenant eviction and moratorium on foreclosures. Right. Uh, there's lots of news happening around that, and you must stay you know, really on top of it all. So let's dive in and talk about it, right? Let's do it. Ready? Okay. Yes. So You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. I have some notes here, so I'm going to share them. I'm going to talk to this if you're listening on the podcast, if you're obviously watching us over on YouTube. You can see these nice notes that I put together for you, uh, and we'll have them obviously in the show notes over at wbnpodcast.com episode one sixty one six zero. Holy mackerel! All right, so options for sellers in an epic low inventory market. Before we get there, let's really talk about the current market. You know what? What are we doing? what's happening in this market and and what what's driving the the low inventory and the number one reason is people just don't want to put their houses their house on the market for a variety of reasons so they're hesitant and it starts obviously with uh the question since there's no inventory and i'm one of those people that doesn't want to put their house on the market causing part of the low inventory then i don't have any place to go we'll right. get to that in a moment so that's number one issue and and you know and this is the thing i keep bringing up and and i i if you're at real estate agents this is the deal you have to be really good at helping the seller understand a, a reality you cannot sell high and buy low simultaneously right okay? just like in the stock market everyone wants the perfect world this is what everyone wants if they own a home Oh my gosh, I want to sell my house and get this crazy high price, get people to pay more than it's worth right now, just because of all these circumstances, which we'll talk about. And when I go put my buyer's hat on, I don't want to do the same thing. I want to be able to get a good deal, not overpay. And that's just not reality. So we have to be able to. It makes no sense. No sense. It does. But for all the years I've been doing, this is where this is what not everybody's a business person. Of course they're not. About, they're emotional about it all. So, you know, ultimately people are not selling their home 
because of that. But it's what's what's fueling the why they're not putting their home on the market. Well, clearly it's the health crisis. COVID-19 is now, you know, one whole year. We're, we're past the year mark in March for most places that, you know, really, you know, March 17th was always a number for that'll be in my head for things shutting down. That's right. Um, I forget what it was for, you know, but somewhere between March and April, everything was pretty much shut down, right? Yeah. A year ago already, right? And we're still not 100% open. So it's that people have concerns about that and the vaccine rollout. And so intriguing You're talking to people that some places the vaccine rollout is happening and others it's still not. So there's just a lot of logistics and concerns still, you know, cases spiking. I mean, as we were talking to, uh, you know, some folks that we know up in Canada, right, this week, and, and Canada is like back in a lockdown situation. Yeah. Uh, so those concerns continue. Number number one in the, you know, there's no inventory. Then, which of course causes the slowdown of the recovery of the economy and unemployment rates. Now there was a great jobs report last week. Mm -hmm. And so that's moving in the right direction. Things to be moving in the right direction, but depending on where you live. So for in Nevada, for example, uh, other places in the country, there are pockets of really still high unemployment rate. I think I saw that it was 5.6% national unemployment rate on average well that's higher in some other states so those are concerns for people as well you know and on top of that just on that same note you know there was the you know the whole shift of uh, administration uh, in the government uh, also was a worry for a while and i think uh, there are a lot of people that are still waiting to see what's going to happen here and what direction is the country going to go so it's beyond just the recovery it's it just the where what is the direction of the, con the country so there's a lot of people really hesitant about that and, and honestly there's a lot of people saying we might as well just stay put because of the unknown and that right. really is the fuel. And then there's two more that are adding to not just the average homeowner. If the average homeowner that is not in a mortgage forbearance issue, because there is still 2.5 million people that are in some kind of forbearance. I mean, there were 2.5 million people that entered into forbearance, but there's still about 800,000 people who uh, are not out of the woods or maybe are, have, are still working on a payment plan. And yeah. inside of that group is a percentage of people who haven't worked things out. And that's the concern in the coming months of the people that really might be in a foreclosure situation because maybe they don't have equity. Not everyone is going to be in the situation of not being able to sell their home. So we have homeowners who are in a mortgage forbearance situation, wherever they are in that. And if they have concerns, because really they have lost jobs and they don't know, they don't right. really go. So why not stay in my home until I'm forced to have to do something? Yes, it's eating up my equity. And this is something very important for, for real estate professionals to understand. You got to be able to be a consultant and advisor to simply state, you know, are there options? If somebody has equity and it's getting eaten up every month, you know, in uh, staying in their home, people may still decide to do that and just let it continue to dwindle because every month they don't make a payment, for example, it is eating into the equity. Sure. That seems to be okay as long as prices continue to go up. But what happens when they don't? That becomes the issue of now equity shrinks or now they're in a short sale situation. And there'll be people who will decide to do that. But there may be people who decide to say, let me just get what I can out of my home and I'll find another place to go. All right. Stay with friends or maybe I can find a rental. There's a lot of people having problems finding rentals. It's always it's a big conundrum. You know, that's the challenge that's happening with everybody. But f some folks don't have issues with that. And they have other concerns. There are people who are like, I might as well stay. Now, look, they just happened. The uh, administration just extended both the eviction and the moratorium uh, forbearance stuff for uh, till June. Yep. So now we're again, I'm suggesting that we're not going to see uh, more inventory come on the market until the latter part of this year for all these reasons you know things can happen uh, so i have a couple links on a few articles that you ought to read around that so a couple things on mortgage forbearance to read and then while we're on it one other uh proposal by the cfpb which of course is the the consumer um you know the bureau that protects the i always forget what that stands for uh cfpb is the agency that came out of the crisis last time to protect consumers. Yeah, it's a federal, uh, federal bureau of protection or something like that. Isn't it's it? it's, like, it's yeah. all about consumer, consumer. Yeah. Um, federal bureau of protection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, yeah. for credit and loans and all this good stuff. So they have proposed a uh, something right now because of the concerns of uh, an impending foreclosure crisis amongst this percentage of homes that are 
that are behind on the forbearance issue of, of doing something where uh, mortgage companies cannot start a foreclosure process. Right now, they can't really for 120 days until somebody's del delinquent. Well, they want to add another 120 days to that, or they want to honestly make it have people go through a pro the mortgage companies go through a process of putting them into a loan modification. Well, these are all the things we knew would start happening. There, you know, it's not going to happen that hundreds of thousands of people are going to be foreclosed on, you know, right. we're not going to go through this with the current administration. That is not going to happen. You know, it, there's going to be something that happens, whether it just extends it, you start to do loan modifications, short sales, helping people transition, maybe, um, you know, dollars to help people. They already have dollars out there for rental assistance. Okay. So bottom line on all of that is, Stay on top of what's happening in the news. And I'm telling you where you should really take a look at housingwire.com is where I get a lot of information. That is an excellent site to go to, to just stay on top of what's happening. Cause it's, it's about real estate, but also mortgages and what's happening on a national level. That's what you have to, you know, you have to read these things to stay on top of it or right. get a news channel from a source that you can trust on what is happening. So these are the reasons why people are hesitant. Okay. And how long is that going to continue? Well, I don't know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, and until we have, you know, here's the deal. It's going to continue until not just regular homeowners. There are people who are investors that are owning homes that have tenants in the homes that they can't evict. Legitimately, you need to go read the articles that we have for you to say there are evictions happening. But there's very specific people who can't be evicted. And these are the people who are filing an affidavit, can show that they have a COVID-related uh, issue with not no income or reduced income. And they're the ones that can go apply and maybe get some relief in the new package that just came out. So not everybody, uh, you know, can, you know, you think there's people that are saying you don't, uh, you can't evict me because, well, now there's steps, there have been steps that have, tenants have to go through. But meanwhile, that perfect storm of, homeowners, investors, mortgage forbearance, when all that gets resolved, maybe later in the year, now we're going to see more inventory come on the market. And that brings up what we're talking about today. No one knows for sure when all that's going to happen. It's just not going to continue forever, which is why if you have a home to sell, if you are an agent and you have sellers, you got to be ready to talk to them about this. So all those things are pe keeping people hesitant. I just mentioned while we have a crazy high buyer demand and yep. because one of the reasons interest rates are still low that's right well, they're not 2.6 or 2.7 they're hovering right above three still crazy low interest rates and it's not just that what is fueling all this demand this is what's fueling all demand more the COVID has helped there helped had so many implications for people personally for businesses there's a huge increase in people who can work from home now or choosing to work from home in various hybrid scenarios. And they are wanting to move or they may not have a house to sell. They just want to go buy a house right now right. and not rent and take care of uh, buying a house at low interest rates and, and so on. Uh, I, I think the health crisis is that I'm one of those people. I made a move. This is perfectly me. I think all of us are reevaluating what we really want and need in a home. Yeah, because you need you need your space. If you're going to be working from home, we've talked about it a lot on the podcast and our other yeah. trainings that you know you need to have your your space for work and your space for play, and for so, your kids. If you're yeah, going for family, or yeah. if you're going to stay more at home, and I and it's not just so. Let's say you know everything the COVID gets under control. I think people have developed a scenario where. I may not want to get out and do all the things I used to do anyway, for a while anyway. I think there will be a reluctance to get back into big groups. And Most definitely. For, months, for some months people. After the numbers are safe because I think people have adjusted for two years. You're going to have adjusted to, I like uh, doing things in my, my backyard. Now I need a backyard. I need a place to live and play and work from. For from crying home. out loud, we've all just kind of slowed down just a little bit. I don't want to rev back up. I mean, it's been kind of nice to have a little That's bit of a point. decompression. So this is happening. It's happening for us. You don't have to go read an article to know that that's happening. It's happening for you that's and the right. people that you are, you surround. We're the people that make the trends. It's not that it's not them. And then we happen to be the people who right. sell houses. We are those people. So there's more and more people that want to be closer to their family. That was my biggest move. Why I made the move. Desire for more affordable housing. There is an exodus out of some states. California continues to have an exodus. Northern 
uh, states. People want better climate, better affordable housing. They want, they're, they're flocking to the states that don't have income tax, uh, which is Florida, Nevada, Texas, Tennessee are four of them. I think there might be something else, but those are Oregon four states getting yeah. a, a ton of influx of people and a little, a lot better affordable housing compared to places like, uh, you know, Chicago, Boston, all parts of California. For yeah. Any of the metro areas, right? Right. And that, that trend that started in the beginning of the pandemic has continued and will continue. It's the it's people aren't so much into the city living for these reasons we're talking about the move to the suburbs is continuing. Okay. So all this is that perfect storm of why there's more buyer demand, the interest rates and all those reasons people want to buy. And what's causing all this crazy high prices right now is li literally no demand. I mean, no uh, homes on the market because of sellers not wanting to put their homes on the market on everything that we've said. Now, what are the benefits to a seller in this historic seller's market? You know, a seller's market is anything that's generally under about five months of inventory. Well, over the past year, I've watched that because I do these market reports go from three months of inventory to well below one month. In some cities and states, it's like a week to two weeks of inventory. I know, inventory. it's crazy. Yep. It's crazy. There's like less than a month, a couple of weeks, you know, two to three weeks of supply of inventory. And that simply just means that if there's the demand stayed and no more homes came on the market, how long would it take to sell all the houses? Okay. Uh, but uh, cl clearly there's always a few houses coming on and selling, but the numbers for sales has decreased because there's not enough inventory. So sellers are in control period, full stop. And that is the biggest reason if you have an option to go somewhere and let's talk about what those options are. There are many people, the ones, okay. So the reality is not everyone's not putting their house on the market. People right. are, some people have to move. They want to move. Some people have got a job relocation. They want to downsize. They want to move. There's reasons people are putting their homes on the market and they have to, and they're motivated. The, the reason there's such a, a lull is the average person is like, Hey, let's just go buy another house. That's not happening. Right. Let's move up. Let's take advantage of the low prices. Let's downsize. That's that reluctance, right? Because of all the things we've just talked about. But the bottom line is if you are in a situation where you have good equity right now, you may want to cash out. And I know many people who are doing this uh -huh. cash out now. So sellers, you might just want to be able to talk this out with sellers. You're in control. I don't know when, how long or how long this is going to continue where we can create a bidding war with my marketing plan. Get so many people writing offers on your house, which by the way, I have to do a lot of work to make that happen for you. So no, I can't reduce my commission. And I'm going to yeah. negotiate to get you the best deal. Uh, in Nevada right now, Southern Nevada, 25% of the homes sold are cash. So that's a 25% chance that we can get a cash. We don't have to worry about appraisal. And even the cash buyers are willing to pay more than list price. So right now, pretty much across the country in all these scenarios, there's pockets where this is not happening. It's very interesting because I have clients all over and, uh, you know, our, uh, we were talking about uh, my client in, in uh, Peoria. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not this, you know, the prices don't go up that much. It's just a different rural, yep. you know, market. It's not rural, but a market. But in most places, you're going to be able to get best terms for the seller right now. Maybe things like lease back, get their closing costs paid. People are doing crazy things. Buyers uh, waiving home inspections and wa wa or doing a home inspection or waiving repairs um, or even removing the inspection, removing the appraisal clause saying we'll pay up to on our team just last week. 30,000 over appraised value, 10, 20, 30,000 over appraised value because people want to buy a house right now and get the interest rate. They're seeing the value of that. That's the big benefit to a seller right now, right? Uh, hey, my, cousin, you know, my cousin in Oregon, they just recently sold their house. Actually, it's on a big piece of property. So the person that bought it is going to subdivide it. They got they closed escrow. They six months remaining in that house, no it. lease, no money for six months. What a deal, right? Because that's the right. people... It's amazing. You can get anything you want, literally. Terms are, terms are here, but as soon as the market shifts, and when's that going to be? If we all knew, we would be millionaires, okay? Right. And, and that's the point I want to make. People that, you know, you you have everyone has to make their own risk tolerance decision because everyone's trying to time it, I think, to say, well, let me get it at the very, very top, and then I'll go do these other things that, you know, like rent and so on. But you you know when you know we've hit the top of the market once we're past it? You discover what the top of a market or a low of a market is two to three months later, 
Okay. Yeah. That's the, the issue. So, it, it, so it's going to be interesting to watch this, right? So right now, sellers, you're in control. Bidding wars, pay over list price, right? Negotiate these terms, as Matt was saying, Every just all kinds of things. So, so what can sellers do right now? If you wanted to take advantage, if, a, if you're an agent here and you're trying to have, this is a conversation you need to have with sellers, with, with people in your database to say, you know what, let me just do a consultation with you to go over what's happening in the market or do a video like I'm talking about right now to say this, if you're in the situation to be able to get the most of your equity right now and you have an option, let me go over what the options are. Let me tell you why you might want to consider selling now. You're not trying to get people to sell because, oh my God, the market's going to crash because it's not going to crash, but it is going to adjust. It's going to adjust as soon as there's more inventory on the market and the economy continues to increase because COVID gets under control, interest rates go up. That's when people will start to go, holy crap, I waited too long. Okay. Now we have more homes on the market. Now it's not what, as I record this today, April 8th, it's not seller. You get to do whatever you want right now. Cause that's pretty much what it was. We've been yeah. talking about this for months and we weren't six months ago, we weren't getting what we're getting now for sellers. Okay. Right. We weren't getting, we were getting 5,000 over in Nevada, 5,000 over appraisal. Now it's off the charts because there's just no inventory and there's so many people that want to buy. Okay. So that's it. So what do you do seller? You may be considered to go ahead and sell max out your equity now before it flattens out or, de or even decreases, which will, which will happen. And even if it flips down and then it will get back to a normal three to 5% appreciation per year, guys in 2020 nationally, the home appreciation rate was 10%. It's crazy. 10%, double, more than double than what it normally is. And in some areas, higher. I just read an article that said Phoenix, just, just in January, year over year appreciation from January 2021 to January 2021 was 15, over 15% appreciation. So in some markets, it's higher than 10%. That's just the national average. So you know what yours is. That's not going to continue. That's that's not sustainable. That's what caused part of the problem with all the mortgage that coupled with all the bad mortgages and well, lending that was, practices. That was the bigger part of it. Yeah. Uh, caused the bubble. Okay. But we can't continue to to sustain that. It has to get back adjusted. So that's the issue. Everyone's trying to figure out when that's going to happen. So if a seller wants to, you know, you just have to have a conversation. Why don't you sell and rent right now? Do you have someone else that you could live with for right now? Or how about these options? You uh, maybe sell to a buyer or an investor, stay on the market until you find an investor or buyer who will give you good value, you know, good top dollar for your house and allow you to stay in the house so you can go find another house. Or better yet, think about buying new construction. If you're in an area that has new construction, now new construction has its issues too, slower times because they are have their own issues with building supplies and labor and they're controlling their right. that's turned into a craziness now in a lot of markets that the builders realize they can kind of control the pricing and they can't really deliver like they need to and they're getting people on waiting lists and creating this demand and you may have six to nine months before you can buy your new home have you noticed so, with new construction, like in the olden days, I'm talking just maybe even like 10 years ago, maybe even less than that, there would be like a couple phases of a development. Now there's like 15 phases because with each phase they reopen, thus price shoots the heck up. It right? does. And there is so much demand and they do have that waiting list. It's, look, it's they, simple. They do, like they, there's a whole new ball game for new yeah. home builders. But it won't last forever. So so the whole point is if you're, if it's, it you know, so let me just go a couple things, buy or new construction. So buy new construction so you can find an investor. There are builders that work with uh, I buyers like open door. Lennar is one of them. There's a few others where you can basically get Lennar uh, open door to buy your house. Now you, you may not get, you'll get a fair price because open door wants to buy and they know that if you just go on the open market, they'll, that you'll, they'll have to be competitive. So I don't think they're going to be, incredibly below market, but here's right. the benefit. What is, what's the benefit to you? If you get to stay open door, or let you stay in your home up to nine months. Okay. So if you know, so agents, you got to know these things, nine months. So nine months of paying rent someplace else, um, you know, so nine months, meaning they, you pick a closing date and you close when your new house is ready. That's the partnership. Some of these I buyers have with local 
uh, builders, national builders. Lennar is one of them. So you just got to know these things so that you can present uh, options to the seller. How great is that? You don't have to do a double move. You stay in the house. You have a guaranteed cash sale. Your house will be ready in six months. You have to keep making your mortgage payment. Then you close. Um, there's even a few of these out here, Easy Knock and others, where you can make a deal with them. The seller can make a deal with Easy Knock and others where you can get some of your equity now to go purchase that or pay for your down, you know, your upgrades and all of that uh, and stay in your home and, and work back a lease agreement. So there's so many options. That and those are huge control. options. I mean, right now it is that what am I going to do next? Just what we're talking about, right? That has is that's that's the big worry. And if you have that off your plate, my God, what an, what an advantage you have. OK, so. There, there literally are options for the for the seller. The, we just mentioned a few new construction, negotiating the lease back, just renting until they until the until they see what happens to the market. Go over all those options with your sellers to see uh, if they're someone who really wants to be able to maximize the equity that they're having uh, in their house now. Uh, and, you know, and even if people are and have an issue, or maybe they're concerned. Uh, they're in a mortgage forbearance or something, maybe selling their home and cashing out uh, because they m maybe have somewhere that they can go allows them to have some money as opposed to losing it ultimately to foreclosure. I think those conversations with people, it's important to have now, not in six months from now when right. you've already eaten up all your equity, right? Smart. Uh, but that's the problem, right? I mean, everybody has a unique situation. Why not? I mean, I can see it. This happened last time. Why not stay in your house until you're forced to leave? So you've stayed in a home. Yes, you're ruining. You potentially might not be ruining your credit if it's legit, because that's part of the CARES Act and all that. That there's no reporting of that during COVID. But at some point, there will be some negative potential impact, perhaps, on your um, credit. But you can always rebuild that. And so people will may decide to stay in their home until they're forced to move, and they didn't have to make any payments on it. So I don't know. There's going to be there's just a myriad of things yeah. happening. Uh, that you have to stay on top of. And so the bottom line today is you know that you have people in your database that own homes that are having the question, you know, I'd love to be able to sell now, but where am I going to go? And I hope we gave you some answers, some ideas, some things to think about, to formulate as part of your consultation that you would have or give you a reason to pick up the phone and call people that you know to say, hey, you know, I don't know if you're thinking of selling your home now, but I'd love to be able to chat with you about the pros and cons of that right now and have yourself, you know, put together the stats, put together, take some of the information we shared today. Go read a little more. Uh, Keeping Current Matters, I'm a huge fan of those guys, Has always has charts and graphs that you can use to put in a presentation. Why don't you record a video, record right. a video talking about this for five minutes and send it out to people saying, I know you have this question. Here's a video where I'm talking about some options that, for you to consider. Things for you to ponder. What your job is to not tell people you should sell now because the market's going to come down. That is unethical um, <laughs> and just wrong. What you want to do is go, here's what's happening in the market. Right. Here's some considerations, you know, and we're not going to know when it's going to shift until it already shifts or it has shifted. And we won't know when we're at the high of the market. So it's just funny. You know, we talk about standing out in the crowd and communicating and getting uh, valuable information to your clients. And, you know, Jan just listed, a, you know, a dozen things that you can do right now. They're, the information is at your fingertips. You just have to go and find it. Right. And the resources that we've already talked about today, they're all right there. I mean, you know, be the market leader, be the consultant in your market. It's pretty it's a great opportunity for people right now to that want to learn and to help their clients. Uh, um, it's awesome. This is great. This is great stuff, there, Brian. Topical I'm, stuff. I love I'm it. I'm inspired about this because I've had this conversation with coach clients all week, and I'm like, man, we're going to talk about this on the podcast because this is real world as we record this. This is happening. It's going to be like this for I think a few months to come. Sure. And then once again, things will shift, and you have to be, you know, we'll be starting to talk about what right now. Once again, I, you know, I you go read the article we have up there about concerns for when what the what the CFPB and the government is going to do, administration is going to do to slow down potential foreclosures. But long, long story short, I don't think foreclosures are going to happen anytime soon, maybe even through this year. The article that I have a link to says if the CFPB gets what they're asking for, banks can't, not so much banks. These This is all about the uh, federally backed mortgage guys like Fannie Freddie, but they also have something in there about banks, you know, private um, that are not regulated by FHA. VA and HUD and so forth, uh, not being able to start foreclosures till 2022. Okay. So 
that's not in that's not in regulation yet but that's what's being talked about and you need to be on top of it so this just continues to extend hundreds of thousands of homes that are in that that may not put their home on the market but maybe they will if they if they have equity and they want to get it out you just have to be aware of that and have the conversation and then when you're talking to the homeowner say let's take a look at what you owe let's do a net sheet let's see what the let's see what the value of your home is today and if they're already in a short sale that becomes a scenario if they have a place to go instead of losing their home to foreclosure or short sales better. And these are things we'll be talking about in the coming months, I know, so. And here's the thing, you know, we talk about 2022, like it's a million, a million years away. It's uh, only eight months away, you know, it's not that far. Right. So unfortunately or fortunately, if you're right. good at listing homes, uh, if you're working with a lot of buyers, that's a, that's a little tough, but man, if there was a nut, a, a, any more reasons to give you why you need to focus on finding the sellers that do want to sell, we've just given you some more ammunition to help you be a better trusted advisor and local market expert. Just do it, people. Make it a great week. Good stuff. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. All right, everybody, that's a wrap for episode 160 of the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. You can find all of our show notes over at wbnlpodcast.com. All of the information and links and great stuff that Jan uh, talked about today are going to be up on the website. Jan O'Brien, did you do anything for Easter weekend? Well, the Emersons, let me throw this up here. We're always having a, you know, all, all we do this every year. Um, oh. Colored. So now it's eggs, and, egg, hard boiled eggs for lunch, egg salad sandwiches for dinner. Egg salad <laughs> is awesome. Man. We had egg salad sandwiches last night and I haven't had one since summertime, last summer. And it, we were in heaven. It was like, oh my God. So it was funny. I was talking to my cousin, as a matter of fact, about the situation that she's having up in Oregon right now because they have sold their property. And that six months, you know, everyone's like, oh, six months, that's going to be great. I can live in the house. There's no, talk about no inventory. There is literally nothing that meets their criteria uh, for buying. Now they're thinking about maybe having to build themselves because there's no wow. new construction up there so i mean there there's it's so interesting anyway i told her that we are dying two dozen eggs she's like how the heck there's only two of you how do you eat two dozen eggs i'm like what are you talking about it's like thanksgiving turkey this turkey that's like everything's got an egg in it this everything's week. egg exactly uh so, good stuff good stuff i'm you know you had talked earlier jan about the weather being so great in or it was yesterday uh, about in florida and did you ever get out and go for a walk Yesterday, just a little bit, but today I am, and uh, we are planning, uh, my sister and I are planning tomorrow, or, or Saturday rather, a, um, I think a visit to a beach city here. We may go check oh, out cool. my little favorite Dunedin, or maybe Tarpon Springs, or get down there to St. Pete area, but we're definitely getting out. It's going to be a good day, and there's a chance of rain on Sunday, so. Yeah, we I had a really awesome I'll weather yesterday. taking it outside. I will be taking it outside uh, today and uh, for sure spending the day on Saturday and taking a break from all this. Yeah, it absolutely feels like spring has definitely sprung for sure because the weather is gorgeous and the, the trees and the flowers. And, I mean, it's Lovely. incredible. This is a great time. Uh, Cal I, of course, you know, I'm a California guy, so I love California. And people that say there's no season in California don't know what the hell. They don't look is what they don't do because it is spring and it is beautiful. It has sprung. Pardon me? Yes, it has sprung. So get out and enjoy. Exactly. So if you uh, want more information, because we like to give tips all the time, we do uh, coach tips every Monday. We do uh, tech tips every Tuesday. And we do Canva marketing tips every Wednesday in our private Facebook group. So if you're interested in being a part of that or joining any of that, please join our Facebook group. Just go to your your Facebook page and type in WBNL Wanderers Club, and we'd be more than happy to let you be a part of the, the fun there. Other than that, anything else, Jana Brand? That's it. All right, everyone, live the life you've dreamed. Continue to mask up and be forever wandering, but not lost. <laughs>